Hi, my name's Cassius Rayner. Welcome back to the second video in this series, which is all about mobile filmmaking, using Filmic Pro, and the new 10-bit log capture capability. So let's dive straight in. So in this episode, I really want to capture two different areas. One, I want to talk about mobile filmmaking, obviously, um, but specifically I'm going to talk about framing and how I frame certain shots and why I frame those shots the way that I did in the actual making of Deadeye. So we'll have a lot of behind the scenes footage to look at and me sort of explaining why I made certain decisions in that shoot. But also, I thought it would be really interesting to get the perspective of an actor. So a professional actor who's worked in front of cameras before, I wanted to really sort of tap into what has the experience been like for them working with a phone and Filmic Pro. So really sort of getting an understanding of how it worked or didn't work for them on the set and what they gained from it. So I thought it would be really interesting to tap into that. So why don't we just dive straight in and check out the interview. So it's lovely to have you, Georgie, here. Um, uh, it was amazing to have you in the film. Oh, thank you very much. Um, you did an exceptional job on Deadeye. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to briefly talk to you about your experiences of it. So maybe you could take us back to the day when you we first met yeah. and the whole idea of being involved in these little projects I was doing. and. Yeah. What was your thought about mobile phone and Filmic Pro? Well, obviously never heard of it before, like, um, and I'd never really heard of mobile filming, like filmmaking, I thought, but it was, as soon as we started, it was so intimate and so just right on the money, you could be there right in the camera and it's, nothing's too forced, because sometimes, you know, with a big, large camera and, and the crew around it, it's quite like, whereas this just felt very, normal i think as we you know growing up around mobiles and stuff and filming and it's not super scary i think that may be the difference um but it just felt very um like i could adjust to it quite quickly and i really liked it and took it on like everything we were doing just took on board quite quickly and so um if we talk about the shooting of dead eye you know what was that experience like in itself to to work in the world of this little phone mm. that's in front of you Mm, like on that, you know, on that, it's it's crazy. The only experience I have, obviously, working with uh, phones is obviously being in in COVID. I do a lot of classes on Zoom on my phone and like self tapes and stuff. So having it physically in front of me, but obviously, you know, not allowed to look at the camera is a bit different. But it, it's as an experience for doing Dead Eye. It was like I said before, super intimate. Like it was, but completely different because you could get shots that you'd never be able to get like the run-in sequences that we did, it was, it felt, I think it felt a lot freer um, that I've ever experienced. You know, when you have massive cameras and massive setups, like you're very, I felt very stiff before. I don't know, maybe that's, I don't know, it's my experience of different things, but it's, it just felt very, I don't know, more of a theatrical performance, I suppose, because it was more 360, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So do you, did you feel more in the sense that, it, it was able to work around you yeah, yeah. a lot more and a, yeah. lot, a lot quicker. And technically, I didn't have to think of it, like it because you were doing that for me, really. And I just had to focus on my performance and and know, you know, where I, where the shot was being placed, obviously. But it wasn't so much that I had to think, okay, I can't move here or this. I just could go with it. So it felt a lot more, um, yeah, free, which is really interesting. interesting. Something that you can shoot like straight away on and see a f more of a final outcome straight away. Obviously I'm not technical like yourself, but for me, just to how you shoot it and when you were showing us the shots, I couldn't believe the standard um, and everything that you could place, like when you were showing us how you wanted to envisage, envisage sorry, a shot and you could, when you were putting the people in front and like the things that you can do on it and how you can visualize that as an actor, that really helps me too, because I know then your vision for something. So I think that's really important um, 
from an actor's perspective to know from their director too. So that's really helpful. Like, and I didn't realise, you know, storyboarding and all that sort of thing on the job. So I thought it was really, yeah, really great. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. No Absolute honour to have you here oh, in the cave. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you for being a part of this. So it was great to catch up with Georgie earlier in that conversation. So let's talk about framing and the importance of framing. And obviously there is a difference when you frame on a mobile phone to what you would actually use on a mainstream camera system. So camera framing is the placement and the position of your subject or your objects within the frame. Basically, framing in film production context is all related to the rule of thirds and composition. Now you can check these out online, I'm not gonna go into it, but you can check this out online, rule of thirds in particular, uh, and it will give you lots and lots of information. So by default, we shoot with the wide angle lens on our mobile phone, unless we're specifically changing that and, and clicking over to a different lens. By default, we shoot with the wide angle lens. Now, it's a fixed wide angle lens, so we need to really think about that when we're actually out filming on the streets, because it doesn't work for close-up shots. And the reason it doesn't work, up, work for a close-up shot is because it's a wide angle lens. That's the key. Okay, it's not designed for close-up shots. Now you can dispute that and say, well, it can, and yes, it can. But what you'll find is that you start to actually morph the shot the closer you get to the subject or the object. You're starting to curve and push the horizontal lines and the vertical lines, okay? And so what you end up with is a very strange close-up shot that looks a little fisheye sort of effect. And it makes it look very mobile video. So we kind of really want to avoid that. So here's some shots here that shows you what happens when you go from a wide angle and you go closer and closer and closer to your subject. And as you get closer, you will see a complete change in how the frame is actually working in the shot. Now this is a physical distance thing. You need to work out and go and practice these shots. Go and work it out. You need to shoot the wide angle lens. It's a great lens to shoot with, but there is a physical distance to an object or, or a subject that you're filming in any particular scenario. There is a point where if you go too close, you start to actually push the horizontal and vertical lines and you kind of want to avoid that. Now there are times where that type of really extreme close up shot may work because it really is about setting what the mood is of the scene that you're filming. So here's an example in Dead Eye of the cafe scene. And there are a couple of close ups here where I'm extremely close on a wide angle lens filming the character Jay as she's responding to the caseworker who is set in a, uh, a close up shot and medium shots. Now you'll see here that it's a lot more rounded and it's quite morphed in the shots and it doesn't kind of match the cut. If you watch that and then the cut to the caseworker, they're two very differently structured frames. Now I did that deliberately because I wanted the audience to start to feel a little bit more uncomfortable. So it's like pushing the visuals a bit more, making it a little bit more disturbing. So it's pushing out the curves, um, the horizontals and the verticals within the frame, and it starts to make it look a little odd, but it sort of adds to the character's mood and where she is. She's going to, into a very dark and very confused and very angry space. And so I wanted to also convey that visually. So this is where, you know, you, you kind of play with the rules a little bit and, and maybe just push the boundaries a bit where it actually works. But in general, it's not the kind of look that you would want throughout your scenes. But let's take some shots from Deadeye and let's talk through some of the framing techniques and why I chose to do certain things. Okay, so for all the close-up shots that I did in uh, the interior scene of the house in the living room, were all shot on medium shots or close-ups. Now, I also used a, a telephoto lens, and in particular, um, I used for the interior scenes here, the moment lens which is a two times telephoto moment lens. Now there's a reason why I use this. 
I wanted to, um, uh, aesthetically, I wanted to make sure that I got the right kind of close-up framing using the telephoto lens and using Filmic Pro's manual focus gives actually gives you a little bit more depth of field to play with. But also the key point is, is that it's not using the wide angle lens. Okay, so I hope that you got some interesting points from the video or you picked up on a couple of things there would be really great. Um, I really would like to say that Filmic Pro is worth the investment. It's one thing having your mobile phone but the real investment as well is obviously having the right recording app to work with it that gives you those manual controls. And for me, Filmic Pro is the one that works and it's worth every penny. No subscription. Don't wanna to have to keep paying for something on subscription. It's great, you invest in it because in the end result is that you're gonna get great videos out of it uh, the more you shoot with it and the more you practice. Okay, so check out Filmic Pro uh, on Google Play or the App Store. If you haven't seen the film, check it out at deadeyefilm.co.uk. I really appreciate your time and I very much look forward to you in the next video. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs>